Hi, here I am, Natalia Bronzova, and this is exclusive interview for my own channel done by Camila Avanesans. Because many people ask me many, many things, and uh, I cannot respond to everyone, and I decide to unveil a little bit about myself, on what I'm doing, and uh, why I'm in Malaysia, and on some of my projects as well. So, here I am, Natalia Brunzova with Camila Avanisans. Okay, I have a few questions for you, Ms. Natalia, and my first question is, uh, can you please tell us about yourself? About myself, I suppose it means uh, where I was born. I was born in Moscow. I finished Moscow Pedagogical University, Philology, Master of Philology. And then I moved to Canada. Then I lived some time in France, then again Canada. Then I lived in the Philippines. Then I traveled all around Asia. And finally, I come in Kuala Lumpur, the city I like the best from Asia. And um, I never travel just for leisure or pleasure. I always do some projects. For example, in early years, I installed, uh, I helped to install 30 old monuments around the world. And uh, I become artist myself. I do many personal exhibitions and uh, usually collaborating with the government organization in each country. And um, I also did acting. I was uh, in a film act. I am actually a member of acting union in Canada, French speaking and English speaking, and uh, become the beauty queen. And finally now I am in, um, I like fashion, I like glamour life, and, uh, and I am in this entertainment business, business now. And But before I wrote seven books also, so I have very big uh, portfolio of my doing. So, uh, Kuala Lumpur for you, it's in your uh, city. Uh, what do you like in Kuala Lumpur? Do you like to stay in Kuala Lumpur? Yes, I like to stay in Kuala Lumpur because the, previously I stayed in Montreal and I love the Kuala Lumpur for its resemblance of the Montreal. Uh, actually, it's about the same size, about the same traffic flow even, uh, about the same city, but always green, all year long green. Contrary to Montreal, where it's so much wintry, that's why I prefer Kuala Lumpur. And um, it's very good air, very good organic food. You know, now I am uh, I eating very special food, uh, most of it organic. Like I do like healthy lifestyle. I do not eat meat. I do not eat rice, uh, no bread, and no sugar. Uh, just all that. And uh, that would because I have to be example for many. You know. Amazing. Okay, and I have one question. Uh, what is the beauty for you? Beauty for me is the, when it's your inner beauty reflect to your outer beauty. For example, when you are 20 years old, you are most of people automatically beautiful, you are like Camilla, okay? But to keep the same beauty look when you are twice the age, for example, it's not always easy. And some people look different when they become to their 30s or 40s. So the, if you want to be beautiful in a more age than 20, you have to work on it. You have to, first of all, love yourself. You have to care for yourself, for your mind, for your body, and of course, for your spirit. You have to be all three, not only physical, because most of the ladies care only for the physical look, but it cannot be beautiful if uh, you don't think beautifully, if you do not act beautifully, and if you don't love yourself. Love yourself, it does not mean to spoil yourself, okay? It does not mean to go and uh, indulge with the sugar or alcohol, you know, or the long parties, do not sleep at night. No, it's quite an opposite. You have to sleep well. You have to eat nice things. You have to avoid a lot of things, you know. And also, you have to think positively and never wish anyone bad things. And um, how to say, because it's reflect to your look. That is why, that's what beauty for me. Your inner, your inner beauty should reflect your yeah. outer beauty. All right? people know that Miss Natalia, she is beauty not inside, but outside. So, okay, okay, if I will ask about uh, how you can describe yourself with one word? With one word, I am. Uh, <laughs> Whatever it means, <laughs> yes. woman, but uh, like a goddess woman, you know? Because for me, 
one goal. It's more than one goal, but one goal. <laughs> because for me, woman is a goddess. We have to behave like that. So the men accordingly behave as a goal to us. Unfortunately, it's not always happened, but we all have to try to be like that, at least. Nice. Uh, do you have any dream? Any dream? I have many dreams, and I have very big dreams. I, um, I dream of my personal museum, for example. I want a big place where all artists and uh, can come and create. Because you know the artists, they are most vulnerable people who actually do much work, but they receive very little money and they need support. So in uh, my few projects, I uh, help artists. I help artists to promote their work, to sell their work, and uh, to do many things. I am not only a glamour, uh, glamour person, but I help artists to promote. That's why um, I also name a charity, because the charity for me, for example, it's not only when you feed the poor, and uh, depend also poor. If it's poor children, of course, they have big potential in life. We need to help them. But uh, poor, for example, who do nothing, who just choose to be like workless and uh, asking money, I do not respect such people. Which I think we should not help them. We should help only those who, who have something to create, who have something to give to society as well. So these people were to be helped. And definitely the artists, because they, they choose uh, to develop their soul. Because art is your, when you put your soul to your media, to your canvases, uh, bronze, or to your writing books, you know, and all this have to be supported. That's why I um, want to create a big project when the whole artist will be supported, or a lot of them at least. Yeah, okay, thank you. And my next question is about uh, what are you afraid in your life? Are you afraid something or...? Yeah, we're all afraid something in our life, I suppose. Um, I'm afraid... Uh, very little things I would say I'm afraid because I try many things in this life and uh, for example many people people are afraid of death okay that's common common for everyone but once in my life I actually had this experience and I would say uh, nothing to afraid guys do not afraid <laughs> I would not tell more details but actually there is a paradise there and uh, all the problems on this earth actually all the problems on this earth because, um, how to say, there we are a spirit, okay, and here we are a body and spirit, okay, and our body demand to be social, body needs air, food, clothes, home, okay, all these material things, and actually many problems come when we try to achieve better material things, and you know, people do career, people fight, people um, do money, they may be abuse someone for money. It's different situations created uh, for our bodies. But our soul do not need any of it, not even air, okay? So do not be afraid to leave this world. <laughs> of course, we are no rush and we have much to do in this world because actually uh, our soul develops through the body, I think, through body experience. That's, somehow, that's why it's together in this life. Soul and body. Okay, and so if we started to talk about experience, uh, which is your the most experience which you remember in your life? The most experience I um, remember in my life, I had a very beautiful experience in life, uh, but the most remembering, maybe it was not the most beautiful, but uh, it's again when the your body is separated with the soul, it's actually wow, you know, it's time of your self knowledge. But after that, you know, when it's come back again, <laughs> you know who you are, you know what you want, and you know what you need to do, and you have actually no fears after that. Uh, that was the experience, but of course my recent experience was my uh, ball, what I organized here, actually in Astana Buddha, and that is why we are doing this interview here in the same place where it was uh, three weeks ago called my uh, fashion show, Queen's, Surya Queen's Gala. It was amazing. It was amazing and I was impressed uh, about how many guests it was actually. And uh, so many people come to me. It was about 300. And uh, 
only maybe 40 people of our team, yeah, 20 queens, then the makeup artists, then the designers, then the, the technical team. I was really, even my friends from Philippines come to, to grace it and um, to make a video on it and to show it on TV of the Philippines. So it's a blessing, you know, and I find for the, the most recent experience that they this, which I keep in my heart, because when people come to you, they uh, like acknowledge you, and uh, it's, it's expression of their attitude, their love to you. They would not come if you just invite them, because uh, they need to have proper attitude. And definitely all my beauty queens and models, they did it voluntarily, and it's also great attitude. And uh, designers, and uh, I'm very grateful and blessed with all of them. So that was a beautiful experience, and I'm so happy Camila was part of it. Thank you so much. And uh, the first day when I met with Ms. Natalia, it was on July month, and uh, since July I can see every day that her life is uh, really amazing and very interesting, very, very. And uh, I can see this, and uh, I have a question. Um, do you have any dream or any wishes which you want to do in your life, and uh, which experience you, uh, you want to do? experience yes uh, still I experienced a lot but not all possible yes I would like to experience uh, many other things as well you know like I experienced to be an actress I experienced already to be an artist and writer okay um, I want maybe to have experience to be a real queen <laughs> because then it's opportunity, then it gives you much possibility. Then you can take care of many, many people. You know, for example, um, it's responsibility, first of all, I understand. You know, like Catherine the Great, she say the crown is a responsibility, it's not a responsibility. Yes. And it's not only a crown. It's not only beauty, yeah. It's responsibility, the happiness of it. Somehow, that's experience. One experience I would like to have. Another one, I would love to play piano, which I never did. Actually, it was Me my dream. Yeah. Me too. It was, uh, so that's uh, also beautiful of self self development experience. And of course, I would like to become a better person. Better. There is no limits to be improved. Okay. Improve ourselves every day. Every day. We have to work on it every day. There is no stop. The moment you stop, your soul die. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I also know that Mr. Tali, she wrote seven books. And uh, uh, I want to ask you, can you please tell us about uh, your books? Yes. Uh, the books is one of uh, my self-development. And actually, uh, to write a book, it's like to show your soul, to unveil your soul in front of others, and people will read it. And uh, it's quite a scary experience when you do the first time, and uh, I did it. <laughs> the same with art, for example, you put your soul colors on the canvas, and when people can come and judge it, you have to be ready to take its outcome, okay? Yes, uh, I wrote seven books, and um, they are not yet novel. That's one of my dreams to write a novel one day, but not, not time for the moment. <laughs> So I, uh, I wrote uh, books on spirituality. That's actually why I traveled to Asia. I wrote book on uh, spiritual things, spiritual matters, uh, and uh, outstanding people. And like uh, one of the faith healers, uh, that's what I did in the Philippines. I wrote book on the first former lady of the Philippines, Madame Imelda Marcos. I was uh, blessed of her friendship, and uh, we were quite uh, friends for a few years. Now I'm here in Malaysia, yeah, that's why it's a bit less, but I'm always happy to meet Madame Marcos because she's outstanding person, who actually was my childhood idol, and uh, I never expected to meet her in life. That is why when I met her in life, all I wanted just to talk to her because I had a few questions for her, and I asked her the interview, and I was not yet writer, I was not a journalist, and she actually accepted the interview, and now uh, we talk about five hours and it was a blessed moment. And then she somehow see my sincerity and she loves Russia very much. I think that is why she permitted me to be like, to travel with her, to be for a while around her. And 
I'm very, very blessed with this friendship, which actually brought me to the Philippines, and I discovered this beautiful country. Uh, but after that, uh, I, a few years later, I discovered Malaysia, which is also a beautiful country and also outstanding. Uh, that's why that's about four of my books I already took, and uh, another one was on the art, was on the modern art, and uh, it was one was on the travel of Russia, historical cities, and uh, Russia Orthodox art. Oh, on Luzon also. We wrote on Luzon Island book. Uh, it was beautiful, beautiful. So it's seven. Yeah. Okay. Well, very really interesting, very really interesting. And uh, my the most uh, favorite question, and I am really interested with this question, who is idol for you? Wow, that's what I already said. Uh, Madame Marcus was one of the idols of my childhood. Another one was Adira Kandi. So, unfortunately, Indira died in a very, very cruel way. So, but fortunately, one of my idol I met in life, and I know her better. And now, even I have her gift from Madame Marcus. Uh, she gave it to me one of the birthday, <clears throat> this lion. So, that's um, actually why we choose an idol. Now, for example, I have no idol, but when we are children, we need to have an example. To, uh, to rely on very high standards to be high, okay? For many of people, the example of their mother, you know, but uh, for me it was uh, outstanding personalities, politicians, you know, that's, I choose my standards very high. <laughs> that's fine. So, um, of course, thank you so much, and uh, your life totally changed, uh, and uh, you're already famous, and do you want to change something in your life? Yeah, I want to be more famous. <laughs> I want to be more famous. There is no limit to that. And um, to change something in your life, that's what I think I'm doing. I'm doing and um, I'm working on it. Yes, I want to change a few. I want, um, how to say, the, to do more in 24 hours than I do now. You know, she's not enough, very enough. busy, very busy, and she wants to be more busy. <laughs> busy, but it's, it brings a result, you know. Uh, not only busy, I enjoy this. Whatever I enjoy, whatever I'm busy with, I am enjoying. For the moment, uh, just recently, some people prom introduced me to one product, uh, and not the product, one project. Uh, they tell me that project can make like 10,000 US plus a month. But I have to devote all my time to that, and I tell them uh, it's only 10,000. How do I enjoy the project? How do I enjoy? Where do I enjoy? They say, what do you mean? It's um, just money. <laughs> I said, no, I would not do it because of just money. I have to even have less, but it has to be enjoyed for, for my soul. I did not want to be involved in this because it demands all my time. Then uh, what about other projects which I really enjoy? I would not have time for that. Okay, so the, the money is not priority and never been for me. Uh, whatever, I'm not a businessman, I'm not a maybe businesswoman enough. She's but a queen. The enjoy it's life, more important. Life enjoyment and do something for others, that's the first priority for me. Right. Nice. And uh, my last question is like a writer, you wrote seven books. But do you have your favorite book which you uh, read like long time ago? With like this book. book of someone else, right? Yeah. Yes, I would say um, maybe most of the Asian people don't know that book, but uh, definitely all the Russian people know that's the Master and Margaret. Oh, yes. It's a book of Master and Margaret, and uh, just for someone who never read it, I will tell them this book actually about your spirituality, right? <laughs> it's about the uh, people meet, uh, how to say, meet something divine, and um, according to that, their soul reflects. If people are not nice, it happens something bad to them. If people are nice, it happens good to them. So it's actually always our choice to be good or not good and to reflect this. So that's my favorite book, which I actually read maybe five or six times. Five or six times? Yeah, because it's really difficult. Every time you read this book, it's always different. When you read it and when you are 15, it's not the way you understand when you are 13. It's always different.
my other books I can say that uh, it's on historical books I like uh, Again, it's Russian, maybe not many people know, but it's a historical book on the Catherine the Great, of course, on the Potemkin I like, and on the many other historical personalities, like, for example, Indira Gandhi. And, uh, by the way, by surprisingly, before I wrote a book on Madame Marcos, I never read any books of her, because I would prefer, when I write on someone, I would prefer not to have information from other sources. I want to have my experience, my... When Emelda asked me, why you want to write on me? What do you want? I say, I want to know your soul. She was so surprised by that. Because no one yet wanted to know her soul. That's why I think maybe she permit me to, to do it. She, in the moment I wrote first uh, version of the book, she read it with Sin Twaus after I left. And uh, she called me next day and she said me, Wow, thank you for your human sensitivity. And uh, I was, it was the greatest compliment for my work. Because a lot of people, they want to know who you are outside, but not all people want to know who are you inside. And Many people who write on her, they wanted to write about scandals and the stupid shoes ideas and whatever. That's the shoes, I never ask her about shoes, I don't care. <laughs> it's not about her personality, you know, her shoes is the, I mean, uh, many people who wrote on her did not even meet her personally. How can you write on someone who did not meet personally? Then you base your, your writing on someone else's idea. It's not correct. You have to meet her, so you need to know. I wrote my book on Imelda, um, judging, I mean, of my experience how she was with me, how we traveled, you know, how it was. There is many, many touching moments. Amazing. Oh, thank you so much, Ms. Natalia. And do you want to say something for people who are watching this? Thank you, darling, very much to come today. And I did it exactly at Istana Budaya because it's now the place of my soul, one of the places of my soul, because we hold my uh, event. I wanted to say something. Um, Maybe someone think I am flamboyant and uh, do glamorous things. I just recently began to celebrate my birthday the way. I want to attract many people and involve with them and to do projects. And it's usually a charity project where I do not sell tickets as I'm not shy to say about it. I'm not business I do not sell tickets. So, and uh, this place somehow related to my soul, you know, but why I celebrate my birthday? Because I never did celebrate it for many, many years. Um, I was brought up in a very strict uh, family where uh, we did not celebrate birthday much. So that's why maybe it comes to celebrate grandly. <laughs> when now, I want many people around me. I, I, but many of them did not even know that my birthday. They come for the fashion. And I did not want to advertise it that way, you know. Because still I want to be like humble. Uh, that's why I think all our life is a reflection of our personality. That's why people like open books, you know, you meet someone and you know, you meet Camilla and you know, perfect, perfect person. <laughs> because she's perfect beauty, okay? Thank you so much. And I'm so thankful she is with me and supporting me to many of my things. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so today was interview with Miss Natalia Bronzova and I am very thankful that you came and I asked you a few questions and I am very interested and thank you so much. Let's do